Welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to see everybody here once again. We are still virtual in our virtual world. We have Phil Healy, who has joined us here today, and we also have Tom Smith as well on our program today. We will be talking about football and baseball. We will be talking about the Patriots debacle from this past weekend. We will be talking about the World Series, and we will be talking about what is expected of Alex Cora potential return to the Red Sox on this program and free agency too for the Red Sox as well. But first I want to start with the New England Patriots and there is breaking news out of New England. I don't know if you guys have heard the breaking news yet, but Julian Edelman looks like he oh, might yeah, be yeah. done for the season. He had a knee surgery uh, procedure that was done this past week. And I think it's safe to say the towel has been thrown. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I heard that today. Um, it was done. I think he got the surgery today, this morning. I think it was too. Um, and I mean, he was not, he was non-existent in the game on Sunday, this past Sunday yep. um, against. Uh, was yeah, it it's so bad. It's so bad. We can't yeah. remember. It's the 49ers. Yeah. 49ers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah that's um, right. And yeah, I mean, he was, he didn't come in until what, like halfway through the fourth quarter. I don't even think that really had anything to do with it. I wasn't looking at that so much as I was looking at Cam Newton's absolute disgraceful performance that he put together on the football field. On well, Sunday. yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think I, think I was, was looking more, of, I was looking more at Cam Newton, not being able to throw the ball to a receiver. I really was, didn't even think of it. I'm like, all right, Edelman's just not going to get a catch or target today because Newton absolutely blows. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he, I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, honestly, they're probably going to finish out the season two and 14. They don't really have an easy schedule the rest of the season. So no, they don't. They don't. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if even the Jets beat them this year, really. Oh, I would be surprised. A, such a surprised. low mark. I wouldn't be surprised to see it either, Tom. I would. Nothing surprises me anymore in 2020. Nothing. Um, I do want to talk about just an overall feeling here on confidence level that we have now in Cam Newton. So, Phil, I don't know what your uh, level is. But uh, my, mine is down in the uh, dungeon. Area. I don't know about you. Well, it can only go up. <laughs> mine's, in the sewer, mine's in the sewer below the dungeon. So. Yeah, exactly. Mine's <laughs> in the waste management plant in Peabody. Mine's in the other, <laughs> mine's in the other uh, part of the world. We go through oh, the dungeon, is. through yep. the swamp, through yep. the sewage and everything. And then we come back up the other side of the earth. It's like, oh, okay, maybe we can, if you take a, 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 Phil, a, yeah, you take a plane. <laughs> So the earth back. is flat, didn't you hear? No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Mine's actually That's why the sun Mine's does a weird Wuhan. thing. What? Mine's in Wuhan. Well, Wuhan, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't have bought uh, bat futures. That's what I shouldn't have done. Uh, well, I think I have more faith in the bat right now than I do with uh, that. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. I, I didn't get a clean look at him that whole game. And it was just kind of like, it was a weird thing. I where, commend you. Well, there, yeah, I so was lucky, apparently. There was, so lucky. there wasn't a clean look to get anyway. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad, we told our family to leave the house on Sunday. It was gone. Oh, wow. Gone. Yeah. No, done. well, that's – and even We're he done. said it. Even he said it, that he knows it's like, yeah, my, my starting job is in jeopardy. And it's like, well, uh, you know, no poop, Sherlock. It's kind of like we understand it. But, uh, no, at least he acknowledges it. And I, the only thing I could say is, like, I don't, is a season loss? Maybe, but yeah. you know what? The only thing you can do, what's to lose is what I would say. And that's why as a fan, yeah, exactly. There's nothing, you just, this is the thing where, are we where we thought we'd be? I mean, I don't know. I thought we'd be at least like maybe three and three would be better. And think about it. You're a game out of, which would be a decent situation. So that's all you're out, but it doesn't look, the last two games didn't look good. I mean, I felt, I felt, you know, I felt kind of confident going into the game on Sunday because we had our uh, health, Practice our full, we had our full offensive line, and I mean, you know, we had everybody, and then in Cam shows up like he did in, in the Denver game, the same same way, and our defense was non-existent. I mean, Jim, Jimmy G just ran all over them. <clears throat> 
Um, another thing that I watched from the game, too, is, again, I'm glad you brought up Garoppolo. He doesn't set the world on fire, but there's a clear difference between him and Cam Newton, and that's the matter of him running an effective offense. He hands the ball off effectively. His running game gets that job done, moves the ball down the field. His defense does a superb job. I'll, I'll gladly take Jimmy Garoppolo off the hands of the 49ers. I would gladly welcome that back. Now, is he Tom Brady level? No one's Tom Brady level. Even Max Kellerman agrees now. So I think our, we can't – the bar can't be raised. We already know what the bar is. Tom Brady's right here. No one ever is going to match that again. But somebody who's adequate – who can get the job done is what I'm hopeful of. I thought that Cam Newton might be able to get the job done after the first couple of games. But I not thought, from what I've seen, not from what I've seen in the past month, I'd say. The past month has been absolute downhill from there. And granted, he did get the virus. We should cut him a little bit of slack because obviously his energy level, his effort level and stuff, it's going to take some time to most likely get back to full health. I get that. But – the overall theme here, here, uh, the overall theme here in New England is not pleasant. Um, the other thing that I want to also bring up is the trade deadline is this Tuesday. That's also our election as well, too. Believe it or not, funny how those two things fell on the same day. Stefan Gilmore's house is up for grabs. Bidding is has goes till Tuesday at four o'clock. The deadline is at five o'clock. So, I I. I fully believe that Gilmore is going to end up getting traded. Probably. Give me some yeah. draft picks and some linebackers. Yep. Or some I, front front seven, or anyone from the front seven. That's why I think that this weekend, let's say that the Patriots do win here. Are they a buyer or are they a seller? I'd still say they're a seller. Yeah, so they're, you're still looking to build for the future. And was it, on top of that, was it, they, I think if they released in between the times we talked, from last Thursday, I think they released the best of the dynasty lineup. Is that what they did, or franchise? Did, yeah, the best, yeah, the best. Yeah. and I forget who said it, but it was pretty funny. Someone's like, "Oh, so they're conceding that the dynasty's over." It's like, well, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, looks it. Yeah, you gotta. I mean, and also, who knows what you know? How long Bill will be on the team or be coaching? So if he in the, if he's still coaching for like five years, and if he wins one in that time frame or gets close, I don't know. I think. You can add it on. I think there's still something left in that tank, for him at least. So l let's see where it goes. I say, you know, yeah. I mean, I think we're sellers, but who knows? He could surprise you because there's an – isn't there an extra spot or playoff slot uh, this year? I think so. Yeah. I, I think there might be. So a 7-9 and nine team can actually get in, which I personally yeah. disagree on. I think if you have a losing record – you don't belong in the playoffs, but that's just my, that's my overall take. It's, it's the NFL trying to make more money. I mean, that, that's plain and simple. Yeah, that's their job. Yep. Um, another question that I want to ask, and it's fair game now, okay? We're pretty much through a, a good part of the season already right here. We all know what Tom Brady's doing with the Buccaneers. He's doing a pretty damn good job, and he's looking like he's the MVP right now for the NFL. My take right there. Could be wrong. Who knows? But I, I like what I see so far. You also have this team here in New England who has had a lot of challenges, so to say. My question is kind of open-ended, but it could be simple as well, too. Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? Who do you take? Hey. I kind of want to wait till the end. To, to no, you're season. not allowed to. Sorry. No cop out here. Right now. Who you All right, taking? Tom Brady. I'll take Tom Brady. Tom Brady. I'll take him. Tom? Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to go with Brady as well. Not, not I've, to jump I've been on. Brady. I've, I, I've even been Brady for the past five, six years. Okay, I'm sick and tired of people saying he was a systems quarterback. That is the greatest football player that has ever lived. And people need to accept it. People need to understand that Brady is most likely going to get himself back to the Super Bowl again this year. Looking at how everything looks like with the Buccaneers and them just adding Antonio Brown. So they already added more depth there. They look like a team that's going to be 
champions is what I'm seeing here so far. So I think that, yeah, a 45 year old or 40, what is he? 43 right now. And still yeah. going out there and producing. Yeah, 56. It, it, yeah. It, 56, <laughs> 90, <laughs> 76, like Tony La Russa, who just got hired by the White Sox today. I mean, what it is. Oh, what, is he going to be the skipper? I mean, age is just a number. It's I, just a number. So I, if yeah, Brady wants to go, number of which he years old, die, yeah. you know what? I'm not going to rule it out. If he wants to play until he's 50, I'm not going to rule it out. Well, how about how about I mean, Arian? I mean, you brought up Antonio Brown. How about uh, Arian trying to say that Brady had nothing to do with them signing? He's a fraud. I've ne- fraud. Well, lame I mean, duck, lame duck, moronic coach. He's just a face. He's just a face over there. That I mean, team is, is all run by Tom. If you have to, I will say this: you are siding with a man right now who is ex- exemplifying all the all the mannerisms of get ready. A LeBron James. Yeah, yes. A man who is taking over, going to, you know, and hey, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying as a dig to me, I'm saying as a dig to you for your hatred of LeBron James, but I understand. But uh, I think you know that if LeBron was even here as a Celtic, I would change my stance. Oh, of course. And I'm with you, and I think we all know, and I think we all know the caliber of player he is, and also Tom Brady, same way. I'm sure someone outside or someone who is a, a Steeler fan, and that's a good franchise to hate us. Yeah, exactly. And he's a he's not a real uh, quarterback. But even I the dog, I, even the dogs that you have there in the do. background they, hate his guts. I mean, you can hear that growl and oh anger. yeah, they're they're very he angry. No one says it all. They do that to anyone they uh, know as a uh, from Cleveland. But yep. Yep. Uh, I will to you back to your point or your um, comment yeah, about Belichick pe- versus Brady. Belichick versus Brady. Uh, Brady uh, about people calling Brady a systems quarterback. I think yeah, I think some people would say that. But I also think, like, I, I mean, it's a little bit of both. Because, you know, you could get – Brady could get to, uh, you know, uh, maybe they get, even get the uh, the NFC um, championship or they get to the divisional. And maybe there's a decision – or maybe the defense doesn't do it for him. And it's not like it didn't happen with the Pats either. But there's yeah. something – there's an intangible there or there's a coaching decision or a team uh, – something that happens with the team – that like is not under Brady's control and it just kind of like it's definitely like well this is just bad coaching or bad you know uh whatever and it's just like well you know it, but then you say oh it just takes that much of a little little better little better than average coach to have him win but I don't know I think you know you gotta admit like cause the first uh Super Bowl they won Brady was good. I mean, Brady was good. Brady was good. He's a rookie. I he mean, was, that really well, that was yeah, much more his of first a team. time. Much more of a team. I'll even put Adam Benatari in that in that uh, yeah. conversation. That was yeah. a team, team win. I mean, they they completely came out and they were the underdog and they won. Yeah. Um, for 03 and 04, I mean, those were two again very close games. I think one was 32 29 for the Panthers and one was like 27 yeah, 24 or something. Yeah, like that. that's exactly what it was. And wow, actually, the Panthers was the sh- well. I mean, like Jake yeah, Delone. If the you first three were all win by field. More, were Donovan all won by Nab, field. Yep. Donovan McNabb, Kurt Werner. I mean, all those names right there that Brady beat. I mean, and he got in a shootout with Delone in yes, the second Super Bowl. Yes, in he like did. That was third quite and fourth a Super quarter. Bowl, right? uh, quarter yeah. That was quite a Super Bowl. But my take here is that I've been Bra- I've been a, I've been in the Brady camp for a long time now. I think that if you took Tom Brady away from New England, I don't think we have as many championships. I will say that. Um, I'm not discrediting Bill Belichick. I think he's one of the greatest football coaches there is. But I do think that when it comes to choosing which side to go to, you have one player who goes out on the field and physically performs. You have another person who sits on the sidelines and calls plays. Yes, it's important. I understand it. But my emphasis goes on the producer on the field. If you're going out and you're getting the job done and you're winning championships, and you're proving that you're the best of the best. How can I not side with Brady? That's why. Um, that's my take. I mean, so I mean, now that now that I'm thinking about it a little bit, I, I feel like Belichick's the kind of coach that like I don't know has his players go out and just he wants to see how they're going to perform. Because I mean, half the time if they don't do what they're supposed to do, you're done for the rest of the game. Oh, you're the Someone top. else is in your spot. And I, so I kind of feel like I kind of feel like he just lets the players run the team, unless Classic he has something to say. Classic example this past weekend was Chase Winovich. How many times did you actually see him on the field that much? 
because he screwed up on one play where he was off sides, I believe. And he sat for pretty much the entire rest of the game. Well, that late hit him. on Garoppolo, too. That's what it was. They had oh, that yeah, that's right. Well too. And they sat him. He was out. Well, so, I mean, that, it's the second year, and I think he just wants to make it clear this is my team. And I actually – I, I'm going to waffle a little bit because I think now speaking more about it and agreeing with you two, I'm like, what am I doing? I know. I think, uh, no, no, it's just, Belichick isn't just hey, a guy I, I calls the plays on the roll. I had all my facts lined up today. Sure. I, I, I'm, a, I'm straight shooting it today. And I can't face them. I can't. Not today. No. no. But, uh, no, it, like he does, I, back to Brady being called just a systems quarterback, it's just kind of on the other end. Bill, he constructs the game plan. He constructs things. He constructs the whole plan of a point of attack. And he needs all these people to be in line. He does all the work. Keith Evans famously on a podcast talked about how, like, Bill Belichick will take all the blame and none of the glory. Because he does, does all well, the things like, oh, don't, he's well, the uh, mastermind. Well, he's yeah, but he, but he tells he, his players. He, he, does all the, he does all the prep work in practice. That's why the, the Denver game was so terrible yeah. and dismal. Yeah, he does they, all, they do all the he does all the prep work with them at practice, and then in the game, it's all up to them. Then explain well, like to me. Then sports, explain yeah. to me the San Francisco game. Yeah, well, you didn't get any offense. You, you didn't get any offense. And you didn't really get much. You didn't really get much defense either. You got nothing. No, you did not. You got the last question I wanted to ask it. you guys too before we wrap up the Patriots and we move on to baseball. Can we put the brakes on the Jared Stidham? is the future of the Patriots debate yep. here. Like, I'm, I'm done. I'm it all done. depends what future you want, I guess. A future as the ball boy? I mean, whatever that is, sure. I mean, he's going to be, he's going to be the next Brian Hoyer. For the, the yeah. Terrible. Backup. Terrible. I'm sorry, but you know what? That sample size that I, that we've seen, what's the, I, there's a, there's a really bad stat that's out there that his completion percentage is like 40% because of, I think he's thrown four picks now in his very, very short NFL career or something like that, and his passing rating is just completely abysmal. I, I don't know how you can possibly think that that guy is going to be anywhere close to being a NFL-caliber quarterback. No, like I said, he's going to be the next Brian Hoyer. And I, you know, I, I understand the rhythm, and you need the reps, and you need more experience, but – you can't say the same when it came when Jimmy Garoppolo got the opportunity. He stepped in and he did his job. Heck, Jacoby Brissett. Wouldn't you take Jacoby Brissett back right now? Absolutely. Hundred percent. I would get on the phone right now and say, "What's it going to take to bring Jacoby back?" I yeah. would take him. Yeah, of course, hundred percent. I would have, uh, you know, and that was funny too. You got you you gave him away for a song, you know. You did. You gave him away for um, Philip Dorsett. Actually, that wasn't. To be fair, he too, was. Too bad. He wasn't. Yeah, but I mean, for as for a quarterback, who is he? Who's he playing for right now? No one, right? Uh Dorsett. I think I he's, think he's playing for anybody. But isn't he? Isn't he still like a third string or backup for Indy? Oh, I think he is. Oh, oh are like, you talking like, about Brissett? I'm, I'm talking sorry. about Brissett. I, I, I'm talking, oh, about, Dorsett, talking sorry. about Brissett or Dorsett. I'm sorry. Well, first, first I'll say I was talking about Brissett, but we can talk about both. That is, Brissett is the backup in Indy. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, because he was. And he and then they got Philip Rivers. I think he's out. I don't think I think he's a free agent. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, I take Kobe. Uh, I, 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 I take Brissett. Yeah. So that's why I keep saying to myself, are they sellers or oh, they Jacoby, buyers? Sorry. I think a lot has to do with this weekend. If they go out and they actually beat Buffalo and it's effective, then call me intrigued. I think a lot still rides on the season on this game. I think because of the nature, because it was it Buffalo's four and three, or are they five and two? I think they're five and two. They're okay. five and two. So yeah, I mean, no, you, this this game is the season. Right yeah, now. you have season. you're only back two games, and you play them twice, and then if you not necessarily went out, but if you keep pace, and if Cam Newton shows any glimpse of what he was back in weeks, you know, the first month, yeah, you might have something. You well, might. no, this game, this game is the season. If they, if they win, at least that'll give them some momentum for the rest of the season. It doesn't matter if they win the second game or not. It's this game. Well, it matters if they win. I mean, sure. I, mean, I, mean, it, it, I know what you mean. The, they have to win this one first. You know what I'm saying. Game, right? yeah. you know, this this, yeah, this first one is the season. If they lose, then forget it. You know, it doesn't matter if they win the second game against Buffalo. I mean, it does, but it doesn't because, I mean, you're just going to be 
crap through the rest of the year. So we already kind of talked about the Bucs. We know the Bucs went on and they had their, you know, the next victory against the Raiders this past weekend. It was a, you know, it was, a, it was an exciting game. I will tell you that, but Brady, Brady was connecting with Gronk on all different sorts of tosses. It was kind of one of those things where it's like deja vu back to New England. It's like, oh yeah, I remember when that used to happen and now Tampa gets to have it all. So and, I, and I, have fully, I have fully jumped on board. I, I am a hundred percent a Bucs fan. I am rooting for Tom Brady. I, thought for so long that I was going to be, oh, I don't want you to do well, Tom. I can't do that. So I'm rooting for Brady. I'm rooting for Gronk. I want to see what's best. Um, I know it's going to be painful for probably some Patriots fans to uh, watch and see, but how can you not? I mean, yeah, I mean he, he, he gave us how many? 20 years. 20 years. Okay, I mean, for, like, the people, yeah. for the people that don't know, Antonio Brown doesn't start until a week from Sunday. He's right. Not able to play this week. Game. Need, yeah, it's it's the following week, and he's kind of jumping in. I know Mike Evans has been hurt, and Chris Godwin has had some finger problems, and it's some nice added depth. But I will tell you, I am never going to be a fan of Antonio Brown. I'm not. Well, who and who knows what that'll do to that team? It That's could disrupt gonna... it. It could. I don't know. It could, it but could. it could also just you know absolutely blow all the, all all the know teams that. out of the water. Yeah, no, it, it, you're right, Tom. We already know the undisciplinary have a crazy characters that the Buccaneers can be. They are very, they're very much loose cannons. So they've been on their, they've been much better behaved the past couple of weeks. But adding in this clown into the into the locker room, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But I am still rooting for Brady and still rooting for Gronk. Um, on baseball side, we had a lot of. Uh, interesting things happened in this past week. Number one, we have the Dodgers win their first championship since 88. Mookie Betts uh, and Joe Kelly are now uh, cha- multiple World Series champions. David Price, how- too. And, well, not really, because he was sat out this year. So I'm not giving him credit on it. But Well, he still gets the I don't know how that sat with a lot of Red Sox fans. I was actually rooting for the Rays until the analytics jumped into the game for game six and Kevin Cash decides to pull Blake Snell with 71 pitches and has thrown five innings, lights out baseball. And the nerds that calculate, oh, you got to go to your bullpen, bullpen time, let's bring him in. And lo and behold, Nick freaking Anderson comes in, game over. As much as I want to blame Kevin Cash, I can't. I want to blame the damn nerds. I want to blame the Steve Urkels in the friggin' Tampa office who cost them that World Series. It, sorry. It is one of those things where we, I keep hearing the term nerds being thrown around. It's like, oh, wait, all these people are nerds who are throwing it around. We're all nerds. Well, but I mean, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yes and no. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, like you didn't see this happening like uh, in the, for the past decade or so. But not only that, yeah, I don't – yeah, watch the game. Was it Tim Kirchin said it last uh, – the night before? No yeah. one's watching the game, and it's just kind of that thing where it's – like, yeah, like, it's just like any other sport. Like, watch – if you're watching it. And also from fans, we're, it's easy for us because we're just, you know – Because we can cri- cr- criticize, you know, really anything. You can do it, yeah, whatever. And we – there's no – we have no real skin in the game. Emotion, well, I think – like, you know I think I mean? the reason behind it, too, is that – you know, if they did end up winning game six, they'd still have Snell available for game seven. If they no, I think a lot of it had to do when they play in the matchup game. And they're saying the third time through the lineup, they didn't want Snell to go through the Dodgers' meet of the lineup. That's a Cy Young winning pitcher. You Wait. freaking morons over Tom, there. Tom, I will, you, oh, go ahead, I sorry. will never root for Tampa, Tampa Rays ever again in my life. I'm done. Done. Checked out. Bye-bye. That was easy, man. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Bye-bye. We'll oh, see. Tom, yeah, we'll see. Exactly, yeah. Tom, wait, you're, you're saying, Tom, that you think they, uh, there's a possibility also that they could save him for game seven. I know, which I think, actually, I didn't even think about that, like if they pulled him early. But, you know. Uh, I mean, who really knows what was going through their heads? But, like, you well, I think the also... guy, didn't the manager say it? He didn't, he was, I thought the manager said, like, oh, he's going to go th- the third time through the lineup. I don't know. But I also know that, you know, they didn't have one of their – the Dodgers didn't have one of their um, better hitters oh, yeah. at that point. Because, you know, you, you do a test and you still start the guy and then you take him out halfway <laughs> yeah. through the game. 
So the one of the players that had one of the things that also happened during this game is during the top of the seventh inning, Major League Baseball phoned down to the Dodgers uh, dugout and told them to remove Justin Turner from the game because his test came back positive for COVID. So I don't know if you guys heard about that. There was a lot of controversy be regarding what happened because Justin Turner came back out onto the field, you know, just They're celebrating, celebrating everything, stuff, what yeah. was going on. And a lot of people were pretty upset that he had happened to do that. So I don't know if you guys have a personal take on that whole scenario that happened. I have mine, but I, I want to hear your opinion. Well, I don't well. have well, a personal one, but I have okay. through my lawyer, we drafted up something. Oh, your lawyer. Okay, good. Uh, no, I – well, Tom, you can go. I'll go. I mean, Phil and I were talking about this a little bit before, but, I mean, I it, they either should have not played the game if they, you know um, – If the test came back positive. Like, well, why no, is the it, test getting – No, they, should, they, the they, shouldn't have, they shouldn't have played the game if they're testing players. I mean, I know they're doing it regularly, but they shouldn't have done it if they knew there were going to be tests, like, coming back at some point that day. They shouldn't I, I have, they shouldn't have played the that. game. Or yeah. – the Dodgers shouldn't have started turning. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that too. They, you know, they could have said, "Okay, you're going to stay in the locker room, and then once, if we get your test back during the game, then you can dress and come in at some point as a pinch hitter or something." Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. No, just like Tom was saying, we were talking about this before he came on, and it was because we're talking about like uh, the game, and it was just so weird to me because I heard like midway through because I was listening or listening half listening half watching because i was doing work on my computer on like espn.com and then at like the sixth or seventh inning i went to the tv uh but it was like yeah why was he like he, he left midway like why I, I was so confused it baffled me so much to like at that point like what do you do like what does it matter at that point that you're taking him out i know it's the right thing to do and you should so like I guess golf clap for that like well, plus they were told to by the league. Well yeah, well I mean like it, whatever party like whatever party like the the whole uh, system of trying to contain this thing which MLB has been horrible at this whole year uh, minus a little bit like the playoffs they were decent about or like the division champion uh, division series uh, going into the championship going to the World Series uh, because they did that bubble pretty much at like two different. Um, yeah, and then this World it's Series, just, they finally let fans in in Texas. Well, it's Texas, of course. But, I mean, of like, course. and you don't mess with it. And that's the thing, too. We were, uh, we were talking, <laughs> Tom, I, don't, I forget if you just mentioned, I apologize, uh, if I'm uh, repeating what you said. But, yeah, they, uh, why not just wait another day if, you're, if you have people tested and you don't get the results back? Like, even because you're not going to, if they win, you know, if the Dodgers win and they did, you know, the celebration, they're not going to adhere to everything. And it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily expect them to, not to say that that's right, but just to say like the reality of the situation, they're not going to adhere to everything because they're going to be hugging and, and you know, celebrating. So I mean, Turner you, was kissing his yeah. girlfriend or wife or whatever. They were showing yeah, on was. TV. And they and, did pictures and he was next to Dave Roberts. With no mask. Or anything on. Just hanging out. Like just uh, pawn everything. Part of me saw. says I don't blame him because he just won a World Series. But yeah, the other part of me is like, dude, like you're kind of being selfish here. Like put your mask on, get off the field, and you know if you're sick, get get away. He claims that he wasn't sick. He claims that it was a false positive. But that's what, but he doesn't know what that means. Yeah, he just says that. And false. It's like oh, I feel fine. It's like yeah, you might be asymptomatic, you loser. So I mean like. Like if some uh, poor person that's not as healthy gets it or something, you know. Yeah, with Dave Roberts is of age or anyone else on yeah. the staff or even anyone on, you know, any, God forbid, anyone, any low-level staff member who's older or just like doesn't have health insurance that he has, Club you know, all that stuff. Or yeah. traveling secretary, whatever yeah. it is. I mean, exactly. you got you to gotta put those selfish situations that you do aside and put the big picture in front of the decisions that you make much more a lot of people a lot and of I, people are so selfish about what they do from i guarantee day. he traveled back with the team to la of course he did, <laughs> of course he Mouth did. wide open of course he did so yeah. that was just my take on the thing um kind of kind of kind of is kind of was hard to see mookie raise that trophy and everything um, i was pretty mookie <laughs> yeah. 
That guy behind oh, you right. in the Red Sox sweatshirt, that still be a Red Sox. Um, I had a field day on Twitter on uh, Shocker. Tuesday night. Well, Tuesday what did you night? do? So, yeah, it was Tuesday. What did so, you do? Monday, whatever the heck it was. Oh, I was all over John Henry and Sam Kennedy. All oh, good. Yeah. No, that, so, that actually I do approve of because I, yeah. I am in, agree in agreement with you. I understand why all you left. All because of the luxury tax. All because that's – Which is kind of like, you know – yeah, okay. So that's, a they can't afford it. that's a once in a lifetime player who's, you know, a face of the game. And that, that's going to be one move that's going to go down in Red Sox history is one of the worst mistakes I've ever made outside of Don Arcillo. Have to throw that in there, too. And Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. Babe it's a big, the big three Orsillo, or big four Orsillo, <laughs> Grady Little, yep. Ricky Betts. Oh, Biggie no, no, Bobby Grady Little. Bobby Valentine. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'm going to say Grady Little is now 100% off the hook after what we after what I just saw in Game Six. Grady oh. Little can go into the Baseball Hall of Fame for all I care right now. <laughs> off the hook for not giving the hook. Oh, put put him in the Hall of Fame after what we. This was the worst managerial decision that has ever happened in Major League Baseball World Series history. You want to hear some typical me? I actually agree with at the time I agreed with what Grady Little did because I thought. I didn't think – I think he was getting – I thought Pedro was getting chipped at, but I, I thought he could finish it. I, you know, I'm one of those guys that's like, let the guy finish it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't think he was – I don't think he was gassed uh, when Pedro was. But that was – that was I mean, he, sh he showed it in the bullpen after he got pulled. You know, he clearly wasn't. No, and I think it just – it was just good hitting by the Yankees. I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, no, I agree, Nick. And actually, it's a very <laughs> – that's a very funny and good point. Um, I don't, yeah. I, Kevin Cash, I don't, man. Let me, let, me, let me get this straight. This, the theme of the show here, all topics today was I agree with Nick. I just want to, I just want to make sure I, I state myself. Listen, can I sign, myself. can I sign something? Because this, this is, be, this is, I, I this is a rare mark, episode of show needs to be mark, yeah. where everything is agreed upon. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't, uh, in turn, the Brady Belichick thing, I'm kind of more leaning towards the middle because I think together they're like that ultimate, you know, Voltron. Kind of thing, because yeah. I you think, put them together, they're gonna win. Yeah, and I think you put like, them up, then it's gonna be different. And I think Brady has a better chance of winning by himself because he's a player. Yeah. Uh, He'll make but, his own team, be a player coach, and win the yeah. Super Bowl with that team. Well, and that goes Brady, back to last I think point, Brady last will week. end up being an NFL owner at some point when he's done with his career. I think he, the best thing he could do for himself in the league is to, well, maybe not for himself because I think his wife would be like, "What are you doing? You have enough. Get out of there." which I don't disagree with, but the best thing for the league he could do and maybe for his brand or whatever is stay in football like that in that capacity. And I think he'd be entertaining at least, you know, he's a, he'd be a great face of a franchise. Yep. Yeah. I don't see him in a broadcasting type role. I, I see him more in a, as an executive. Yeah, he is. I mean, not to be, he's not a dumb, he's not a Dumbo, but he is not entertaining to listen to speak. No, well, he's been yeah, but he's, he's not, he's not a big fan. He's not a big fan of being in front of the camera. No, he's not. Never has been. No, no that's true. That's that's fair. Especially just... when you have guys like Tony Romo, who is, who um, you know, is very good. He's very yeah. good at his job. Um, I was gonna say he's a Mike Hog, but he's not. I actually like Tony Romo broadcasting. I think he does a good job. Yeah, I felt bad for them last week. Yeah, I did they, too. They, they clearly were like, "What do we do?" We don't. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Know they what didn't. To do. Well, anyways, guys, thank you all for joining again here today on episode 87. It's a Rob Gronkowski special, <laughs> and we will see you all here That's again. why Phil was agreeing with you. Okay, I get it now. Yes. We will see you all here again next time where we hope we have an announcement on the rehiring of Alex Cora, and we'll talk more about that on our next show. So for Nick Face, Tom Smith, and Phil Healy, keep on facing the facts. Adios. Bye.